Good evening. Good to see everybody tonight in the house of God. Amen. Aren't you glad to be here? Isn't it good to be out and about and in the house of God tonight? It's good to see you all with us. And uh, I trust you've had a good day. It was a good day. I thought it was a good day. I thought we had a great service this morning. Uh, Brother Stroop was with us and Beacon of Truth. And, and they got all that stuff loaded. And, uh, and we went out and had lunch. I'm with, can I say something about going out on Sunday to eat lunch now? Don't go, uh, uh, or go later on in the day. It's a long wait, but it was good. But anyway, uh, we had a good day with them and good weekend. So uh, uh, thank you all for uh, helping out with that. And those Bibles will reach somewhere now. Uh, they'll get in the hands of people somewhere, and uh, the Word of God will be spread around to uh, people that we we may never see, but but. They'll see the Word of God. Amen. So uh, uh, good to be back tonight. We've got uh, Brother, uh, I lost your card. What did I do with your card? Yeah, here it is. Uh, let's see. Christopher Shoemate. Uh, Christopher is with uh, Rock of Ages Prison Ministry. And uh, he, uh, he is uh, 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 working with them, and he's reaching America's youth with the gospel. So he goes into the juvenile center. And the, uh, uh, reaching these young people, and he's going to tell us some about that tonight, and and going to share that with us, and going to preach to us tonight, Amen. And so it's good to have him uh, with us, a missionary with Rock of Ages Ministries, and so doing a good work among the young people. And by the way, uh, they 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 need to be reached, Amen. 
And uh, me and him was talking some about that earlier. Some of the stories you hear some of these young men and women tell you break your heart. Amen. That's some of the things that where they are and what they've encountered. And, and uh, nobody to help them, nobody to. It is, it is sad. But anyway, thank God, thank God that God goes everywhere. Amen. And reaches people everywhere. And I just think he's doing a great work. And he's going to share some of that with us here a little bit tonight. And so we're going to, we're going to sing. How about singing? So if you'll, if you'll stand to sing, we're going to sing, Take the Name of Jesus with You. Let's stand and sing tonight. of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe, it will joy and comfort give you, take it then wherever you go, precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven, precious name. as a shield from every snare if temptations round you gather breathe that holy name in prayer precious name oh how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven precious name Jesus, how it thrills our souls with joy when his loving arms receive us and his songs our tongues employ. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name. Sweet hope of earth and joy of him at the name of Jesus bowing, falling prostrate at his feet. King of kings in heaven will crown him when our journey is complete. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Amen. Well, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, we had this prayer request from this morning. Uh, pray for uh, Brother Charlie Workman. Uh, he's having uh, uh, surgery. Uh, let's see, uh, Wednesday surgery and Friday follow-up. So uh, let's pray for Charlie Workman. Also, Declan Workman, that's their uh, grandson. Uh, of course, uh, the prayer request is that the fever will break. He has encephalitis. Uh, and uh, and uh, he's uh, having some seizures along with this so let's pray for him he's in he has to be fever free i believe they told him for 24 hours for the limb come home so um, so i haven't heard the latest other than from this morning so let's pray for declan workman uh tonight as well and then let's continue to pray for uh shelby graham as she's recovering from her surgery and uh, let's remember her i see gail back there pray for gail gail's going to have surgery Coming up, we're getting closer there, ain't we, Gail? Yeah, so let's pray for Gail and pray for her pain as she uh, awaits that. Anybody else tonight?
pray for uh, Sue as she's trying to help David and Abby, as, uh, or David especially, and so he needs some help. And, uh, and let's just pray God gives her the right words. Amen. He'll do that. He sure will. So let's pray for them. Okay, Angela Farley. All right, let's remember that request. <clears throat> okay, uh, Jerry Ray and Brenda Oxley. All right. Jamie, okay, pray for Jamie Reynolds tonight. Anita Connor. Jean Midkiff, yes, let's remember Jean. Okay, let's remember Mac Keaton and Edward Keaton. Pray for Mac to be saved. Amen. Yeah. Pray for, okay, pray for Debbie. Debbie's not feeling good today. Remember her. And in our prayer time, let's thank God. Thank God for grace and mercy. And I always want to thank God for his loving, his protecting hand. Amen. Watching over us and helping us and keeping us safe. And I just praise God for that tonight. So let's look to the Lord in prayer tonight. Our Father, which art in heaven, oh God, we're so thankful, Lord, for another day. God, for another opportunity, Lord, to gather in the house of God again. Thank you, Lord, for these folks that have made their way out here tonight. And Lord, we just, what a privilege it is to be able to gather in the house of God, Lord, and uh, just feel your presence. Father, you told us that every time we'll come, Lord, you will gather with us. And, Father, we just praise your name for that. And I, I thank you, Lord, for those that are listening tonight by the way of the live stream. And, uh, Father, we ask you to bless them, Lord, where they are tonight. And I pray for those, Lord, that are not listening at all. Father, I pray for those that doesn't seem to worry or uh, doesn't seem to care about the things of God. And I just pray, Father, you'll convict their hearts tonight. And, Lord, I was, I was thinking today as, as we uh, stepped into new ground and, and, Lord, as we began to... Uh, uh, have a live stream and many folks will listen to the uh, service tonight. I pray that somebody would just happen by it, Lord, that might need, be needing help, whether they be lost or whether they're in a place, Father, they just need to hear the word of God. And so, Lord, we know you can work through any means and all means, and, Father, we thank you for that. And, Lord, we thank you for saving our soul. Lord, we don't deserve that, but, God, you've been good to us, and we just thank you, Lord, for salvation full and free. And, Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, uh, for... Uh, your help, Lord, you've watched over us and took care of us. We thank you, Lord, for the hedge of protection. And, Father, we pray for our hedge to be put around us, Lord, and to ward off the fiery darts of the devil, to ward off this evil disease and, Lord, the evilness the world is throwing our way. And, Father, we just pray you'll give us, Lord, comfort, and we can find comfort in the Word of God. And, Father, we pray for these prayer requests, and I've been many mentioned here, Lord. We heard of some needing to be saved. Father, I pray for revival in our land. I pray, God, that you'll send salvation this Mr. Keaton, Father. Somebody will share the word of God with him. He might be saved. Pray for our revival, Lord, next week. Father, that you uh, revive our hearts. God, that we might reach a lost and dying world. I pray for these. It was mentioned, by the way, of sickness. This lady fighting this COVID disease. We pray for her, her family. And, Lord, we pray for uh, Shelby as she's recovering from her surgery. And, and Father, we want to pray for uh, Gail tonight, Lord, that you help her. Father, and as she's approaching surgery, we ask you, Father, to ease her pain. Lord, till then, we pray, Father, for Jerry Ray uh, and Brenda Oxley, as mentioned tonight. And, and, Father, we pray for Anita Connor. And, Lord, we want to meet, remember Jean Midkiff tonight. Lord, that you'll be with her, God, and help her. And, Father, we uh, ask you to meet the need. We pray for Jamie tonight, Lord, as mentioned. Lord, you'll be with him. Help him tonight. And, Lord, we pray for Sue. Father, that you'll give Sue the right words, Father, to help this, this man is troubled, and Lord, he's just seeking for help. And Lord, we know his help must be in the Word of God. And Lord, you use her as your instrument, Father, to give him the right words, Father, to guide him in the way that he should go. Father, bless our, our time in the house of God tonight. We thank you for Brother Shoemate that's with us. And Lord, you'll be with him. And Lord, his ministry there to these young men and, uh, men and women in these juvenile centers. Father, that uh, life has, uh, has, has, has been turned upside down for them. But, Lord, we just pray you'll help them, God, as he'll give, go out and give the word of God to them, help them realize that they're not in a hopeless case, they're not in a hopeless place, that God is still God and he can help anyone. Lord, bless his ministry and bless him as he comes tonight. 
Now, Lord, help us. We love you. We thank you for giving us this place and for meeting with us. Lord, you'll have your way in the place tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to sing. That's okay. We. Amen. Amen. I told them sometimes they got to get down the bottom of the barrel. And so they have. Amen. So I'm singing from this thing. Is that okay? <laughs> oh, once my soul was astray. From the heavenly way I was wretched And foul as could be But then the Savior in love Gave me peace from above <laughs> When he reached down his hand for me Now I was near To despair When he came To me there And he showed me That I Could be free And then he lifted my feet and gave me gladness complete when he reached down his head for me. Now when the Savior reached down for me and when down his head for me. You remember that day? And now my heart it does rejoice since I heard his sweet voice and to the tempest to him I can flee uh, there to lean on his arms safe secure from all harm since he reached down his hand for stand. We're going to sing, I know whom I have believed. Please stand. I know not why God's wondrous grace to me. He 
Tonight, if you want to give to the uh, Dollar for Mission Fund, I told you this morning that um, what we received today is going to the Beacon of Truth. Uh, he's with us this morning, and they'll be collecting that. I don't guess they already have, have they? Have they already collected it? Well, if you want to give, give anyway, and we'll make them collect it again. Amen? So, <laughs> y'all excuse me, but anyway... Um, uh, the mission offering today goes to Beacon of Truth, and we'll see they get it uh, before we send it off this week. So if you want to give to that, do so. Uh, it's a great ministry, and, and uh, of course, they're just like everybody else. It's been hindered some here. You heard him say this morning they were behind. We've been doing a little bit. Of, that's the case for everybody. So anyway, but keep praying for them. They're getting ready to roll out full force again. And How important it is, the Word of God must not be stopped. And that's what the devil wants to do. He wants to stop it, doesn't he? But, uh, hey, uh, we need people determined to keep it moving. And we thank, we thank God for people like them. Preaching the word of God. I'm almost singing another song, and we're going to turn this guy loose. So you all go ahead and fire that one up. It should be, on the, it should be back there. Uh, uh, just turn something on. And, uh, and we'll, we'll sing it. Amen. We'll try it anyway, won't we? And uh, 
Y'all can sing with me if you want to. Amen. In a stable in Bethlehem was born the king of all. And to the shepherds heaven's voice proclaimed peace to all men in Jesus' name. It's the greatest story ever told. It can be bought and it can be sold. It brings to life the darkest sea. And it sets us free to live again. Standing by the waters of Jordan Stream, John said, Behold the land. And from a cloud, God's voice did speak. Said, This is my son in whom I'm pleased. Then on a cross at Calvary, my Jesus gave his life for me. He let and died that I might live. And oh, The third day, Mary found that stone rolled away. Why seek ye the living among the dead? For he has risen, ah, death just like he said. Now listen to this. Then on a mountain, after 40 days, 500 blocks, as he moved away, two men stood by in white rain, said this same Jesus, well, he'll come again someday. It's the greatest story ever told. It can be evolved. And it can be so It brings to light The darkest sea And it sets us free To live in It's the greatest story Ever told So let's keep on telling Amen Amen Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, Brother Shoemate, it's good to have you with us. Uh, he got in traffic jam coming up here. His truck on fire down here in 77. And he got stuck in the middle of it. Yeah. But he got here in time. You didn't break no speed limits, did you? No. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, one thing about Maranatha Baptist Church. Uh, we love missionaries, and we love people getting the gospel. And I honestly believe that's why God, God blesses us so much, uh, because this church is always, and as, as long as I've got anything to say about it, we always will have a heart for mission, mission work and missionaries, getting the word of God to people from, from this tall to that tall. Amen. And... Uh, you come on, brother, and he's going to tell us some about his ministry. Said he didn't sing. Said he didn't play the piano. Said he danced a little bit, but I said, can't oh, no. dance. And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, no. no, I'm just kidding. If you're, if you're around me long enough, you know you can't take oh, me seriously. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's good. Let's give him a good old Maranatha Baptist Church welcome. Thank you, Pastor, so much. Let me say amen. It's good to be in the Lord's house tonight. 
uh, I'm thankful for the opportunity to come and uh, share the ministry and what God's called me to do and uh, share what God put upon my heart. And again, it's uh, good to see a church house full. It's good to see people here. And Pastor, I appreciate you, the opportunity to allow me to come. Uh, you be in prayer for me. I'm always nervous when I stand up. And I'm not a good public speaker. Uh, in high school, I'd do anything to get out of book report. I'd just rather take a zero than get up and uh, stand and talk. But uh, then the Lord said, well, we'll just call him to preach. So uh, it proves the Lord has a sense of humor. And of all people, he'd choose someone like me. But I'm thankful for the call of God upon my life. And uh, there's nothing I'd rather do than serve him. Uh, there's nothing I'd rather do than preach the word of God. And uh, I'm a big joker, too, and I'd rather preach than eat. So you can tell I, if, I must really like to preach. So uh, it's good to smile. And uh, when we come to the house of the Lord, there'll be times we can cry and uh, have burns. But it's good to smile every once in a while. And uh, I believe the Bible talks it does us well to have a grin and have a, a smile upon our face. But again, my name is Christopher Shoemade. I'm a missionary at Rock of Ages. Uh, God's called me to go reach the juveniles. Uh, across our great nation. I'll be in the prisons in uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Mississippi, the Southeast states. That's our target. Uh, right now, there are only three missionaries in the juvenile revival team, so we have this whole nation to cover. And uh, we're just trying to do what we can. And uh, I just came on board back in March. I started deputation. And how many of y'all heard of Rock of Ages before? Would you slip it? Okay, wow, okay. Well, almost everybody sort of rock of ages, but uh, I just started deputation back in March trying to get my support to go and do what God's called me to do. And then the coronavirus happened, so you can imagine how it's going. And, uh, but uh, the, Lord, the Lord takes care of his own. Amen. Let me just say that the Lord will take care of his children. And, uh, he puts his name on the line when it comes to taking care of his own. I believe the Bible talks about look at the sparrows and look at the flowers and all that. They don't spoil and uh, toil and all that. And uh, He'll take care of his own. And I'm thankful for that. I've not, uh, I've not had any need that went unmet. He's been taking care of everything. And I just thank God for, for him being God this, uh, tonight. And I just love him tonight. But I uh, started in March on uh, deputation and walked away from my job about two years ago praying to see what God would have me to do. And I worked for the post office. And uh, the Lord called me out of that. I was working, climbing the ladder of success, uh, getting ready to be a supervisor and kind of uh, climb the ladder. And great money, great benefits. I loved it. But the Lord put his finger upon my heart. And I, have you ever learned you can't argue with God? You'll never win. And I kind of said, you know, Lord, this is what I want. This is what I plan. And I uh, just kind of talked. Well, I don't want to say argue, but kind of talked with God and told him what I wanted. And the Lord used this book against me. He said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways. I said, Lord, you got me there. If I walk away from this job that I want and the job that I have, how will I be able to make money and how will I be able to provide for my, uh, you know, I like to have a family and a house one day and I like to have, the, you know, just the American dream. And I said, Lord, how will that even be possible? The Lord used a sword against me. He cut me again. He said, my God shall supply all your need. According to I said, Lord, you got me. I said, Lord, what about this? And came up with another excuse. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. And every excuse I came up with, church, you know what the Lord did? He used this book against me. He just started cutting me left and right, verse after verse. And finally, I came up with another excuse. And Pastor, the Holy Ghost spoke to my heart so real that night or that morning on the way to work. I went to work, clocked in at 4.30. It was about 4 o'clock going up through the apple orchards of North Carolina. The Holy Ghost spoke to my heart and he said four words. He said, quit living for self. Whenever the Lord told me that, it just broke me. I poured my heart out on the way to work. I said, Lord, if you give me the confirmation, Lord, if you make it known, if you want me to walk away, I'll give my two-week notice today. The Lord confirmed it. The Lord gave me some scripture. That, uh, that day, whenever my supervisor came in at 6.30 that morning, I walked into his office. His name's Phil, Phil Payne. I went in there and I said, Phil, I need to give my two-week notice. He took his glasses off, said, and he said, are you sure about that? I said, I'm not. I said, but the Lord is. And you see, I didn't know exactly what God was doing in my life. All I knew is I just better trust him. I know the Bible talks about we walk by faith and not by sight. And the Bible says without faith it's impossible to please Him. And it takes faith. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. And I knew that I just better trust God. I didn't understand it. But looking back, I understand what God was doing in my life. God wanted me to take the, my hand off the door and what I wanted. And he, I, he wanted me to close that door before He had ever opened the door and what He wanted. In uh, December, that would be two years since I walked away from my job. And the Lord called me to Rock of Ages, called me to go after the juveniles. And I'm just so thankful, looking to God, just trusting Him. He knows best for my, for my life and for your life. And we can trust Him. I'm glad He's faithful. He'll never lead you down the wrong path. And I'm glad His Word will always confirm what He says. I'm glad it won't contradict, it compliments. And I'm thankful for the calling of God upon my life. But uh, God's called me to go after the 
and juveniles you know, across our nation. And God gave me a verse, and let me give you the verse, second, or sorry, Judges chapter 2 and verse number 10. The Bible says, And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. The Lord gave me that verse and told me that's exactly what we have here in our nation. We got a generation coming up behind us. They know nothing about the house of God. They know nothing about God of the house. They know nothing about uh, the man of God. They know nothing about religion. They know nothing about God. You see, they never had a mom or dad take them to church. They didn't have a grandma or grandpa to tell them about the Lord. They didn't have a church that loved on them and brought them to church. You see, they don't, they don't know. They're blind. The Bible talks about the God of this world blinded them. Lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine and reveal to them. Yeah. See, they just don't know. And I don't know about you, but if you all turn on the news, watch Fox News or anything, you can see the uh, mess that we have in our nation out in the streets. And I'm not being disrespectful and mean when I say this, but, uh, Pastor, I don't see a lot of them people doing their things. that They have a lot of gray in their hair. It's most of the young people out there doing that. It's most of the young people causing all the distractions and uh, destruction in the streets and uh, tearing down statues and uh, going in. If they want a TV, they just go in and steal it and not even pay for it. And, uh, it's, it's a younger crowd doing these things. It's not the older crowd. It's a younger crowd. Let me ask you this, church. Is there anything, worth, is there anything more worth fighting for than the youth? Amen. Is the youth worth fighting for? I tell you, I believe it is. I believe David looked at his brother and said, is there not a cause? Right. I tell you, there is a cause. Yes, sir. God's command us. God's commanded me to go to reach the young people with the gospel. And I'm, I'm not going there telling about how good I am because I'm not good. And there's no good in Chris. The only good in Chris is Christ. I tell you, I believe Paul said, In my flesh dwells no good thing. There's nothing good in me. And there's nothing good in you. The only good about any of us is Christ. Amen. Can I tell you, God called me to reach the young people. And I'm trying to do my best, to do my part, to do what God's called me to do. Can I tell you, I, I can't tell you they all get in, Pastor, because they don't. But I think God, some do. Amen. Can I tell you, I'm not responsible for the results. What God's called me to do is scatter the seed. <laughs> Somebody else will come by and water it. And you know what? God will give the increase in His will and His way. You see, God will produce the works. God will produce the fruit. I'm just commanded to cast out seed. I'm just commanded to preach this book and tell about Him, the one who can save anybody, the one who's long-suffering, the one who's willing that not any should perish, but all come to repentance. Let me give you a couple stories about what happened, and I'll tell you how God moved, and I'll get in and uh, preach a message, and we'll go to the house. Back in October, I was volunteered for about four or five years. And uh, like I said, I was working at the post office trying to pray and see what God wanted me to do. And uh, I didn't want to do it just because it was a good thing. I wanted to do it because it was a God thing. I wanted to make sure it was the will of God. And I didn't want to you know, pull the trigger early. And I waited until God confirmed it, gave me scripture to back it up. And then I joined Rock of Ages. But until then, I volunteered for about four or five years. Back in October 2019, we was down in Florida. And uh, one of the other missionaries had me to preach to the group of young boys that came in. There was probably, I don't know, they were under 18. There was probably 13, 14, all the way up to maybe 16 at the oldest. And uh, it was a whole room full. And uh, I'm not talking about kids that are in these uh, prisons. I'm talking about their maximum security youth prisons. And they, they're not just kids that stole candy from a candy store. They're not kids that cheated on their math or science test. Or, uh, they're not even kids that maybe forged their parents' signature on a report card or uh, anything like that. I might have been guilty of forging a signature a time or two, but uh, I'm not talking about anything like that. I'm talking about kids that uh, killed their mom and dad and just killed the whole family. I'm talking about kids doing, I mean, just the things I can't even speak of. Being locked up at the age of 13, 14 years old. I mean, people looked at them and said, man, they ruined their life. I mean, I'm just talking about people that look at them and saying they're just uh, scum of the earth. They ain't going to amount to anything. But can I tell you, they still have a soul. And if they die without Christ, they're going to end up in a devil's hell. And can I tell you, uh, somebody needs to love on them. Somebody needs to go after them. Somebody needs to preach the gospel unto them. I don't want to see anybody die and go to hell. I tell you, God put a burden in my heart. God put a calling on my life to go after those young people. I was preaching, and it was down in Florida, and they filled up the pews. And I'll never forget, Pastor, about three rows from the left, or three rows from the front on the left side, there's a young black boy, probably 14 years old. I mean, he wasn't tall at all. I was preaching that morning. He would throw his head back and cuss, blaspheme. He would cuss me, cuss God, cuss the Bible. Here I am trying to pour my heart out, and here he is just laughing, cussing, being a distraction. I just stopped in the middle of message. I said, I just wanted to let y'all boys know something. I said, I love you. I care for you. I came all the way down from North Carolina to tell you that I care for you. I said, but more importantly, I said, there's a God in heaven who loves you and sent his son to die to make a way out of a place called hell. I said, I really appreciate it if you just listen. 
But what really tore my heart out was that young boy about three rows back from the left, or three rows from the front on the left, when I was preaching, walking back and forth, Pastor, he pretended to pull a gun out of his pocket, and he pointed at me. When I'm walking back and forth, he followed me with that gun, and he pretended to shoot at me, pretend to shoot the man of God when he was preaching, and then just throw his head back, laugh, and start cussing. I tell you, if he had a real gun, you know what he would have done? He would have used it. I tell you, after I told him what I was there for, told him that I loved him, I tell you, he put his gun away. He didn't follow me around with that gun anymore. I tell you, he followed me around with his eyes. He was glued in. I tell you, he followed me everywhere I went. He followed me with his eyes. I tell you, I saw the Holy Ghost break that young boy that morning. Pretty soon I saw tears start coming out of his eyes. I saw that young boy bow his head, not say a word. I saw the Holy Ghost peel him back layer by layer like you would an onion. He just hung his head. Tears started dripping down. I got done preaching, gave it over to the other missionary. He gave the altar call. You know who the one of the first ones up and came down to the altar was? That young black boy that was cussing me, cussing God, cussing the Bible. Fell down at the altar. Got born again that morning. Got up, slinging tears, wiping snot. The next thing you know, you know what he did? He came up to me. Shook my hand. He said, I'm sorry for what I've done. He said, I didn't mean what I said. Would you forgive me? I'm sorry for what I've done. I didn't mean it. I don't know why I was doing what I was doing. Would you forgive me? Pastor, he said it over and over and over. I said, son, I forgive you. You ain't got to apologize. I forgive you. He said, I don't know why I was doing what I was doing. I, just, I don't know. I said, I know why. He looked at me. I looked at him. I said, you was lost. I said, you was blind. You didn't know any better. You was doing what sinners do. You was just sinning. I tell you, he walked in full of hell, full of anger. I mean, you could just see it in his eyes. Just, I mean, just black. I tell you, he left different that morning. He left with a smile, grinning ear to ear. I tell you, those tears just reflecting them big old white teeth. He left, I mean, just full of the Holy Ghost, smiling ear to ear, had joy. He walked in on his way to hell. He left on his way to heaven. I tell you, that's not, the, that's not me. That's the power of the gospel. That's what Jesus can do. I believe Paul said, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus. I'm glad the gospel still works. I'm glad the blood's never lost its power. I tell you, they got other groups and organizations that goes in there, and uh, more so one group more than the other. They go in there and they tell these boys that uh, God understands what you're going through, and God understands how you don't have a family, and you kind of been dealt a bad hand, I guess you could explain. And uh, God knows exactly what you're doing, uh, dealing with. And uh, this is basically your purgatory. This is your trouble that you're facing here. God wants to see that you're able to overcome that before He lets you into heaven. So you just do the best you can here, and when you die, God will reward you then. You see, the only thing I have a problem with is I don't find that in this book. I don't find that in the Bible. I do find where John the Baptist and Jesus preach where except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. I tell you, we go in there and we preach the truth. We go in there and we preach the gospel. I tell you, it makes some of them mad, but you know what? I'm still preaching the gospel. I'm still preaching the truth. You know what? Hey, the Bible, Paul even said, am I therefore become the enemy because I tell you the truth? I tell you, I don't want to see anybody die and go to hell. I tell you, I want to tell him about a man who loves him. A man who laid down his life. The Bible says no man, no greater love than this, a man to lay down his life for his friends. I tell you, the God's still working in the prisons. God's still reaching those young people. I tell you, I, I just have a heart. God, have a call, God called me to reach those young people. We all can't go down to Florida and take off a week or two weeks or go down to Mississippi or South Carolina and preach. But I can. God's called me to go. I'm wanting to go. I'm willing to go. But you see, I can't go. I know I have to have the Lord, and I already have His hand upon me. But you see, I can't go without church's help. I can't go without individual's help. I can't go without prayers. I need help to do what God's called me to do. And I, there ain't no doubt. I know three things in life. I know I'm saved. I know I'm called to preach. And I know I'm standing in the will of God tonight. And there's no place I'd rather be. I question a lot of things in my life. But those three things, those three things I got nailed down. I'm not doubting my calling. I'm not doubting my salvation. I'm not doubting the call to preach. I know all three of those things are settled in my heart and soul. And church, I need help to reach those young people. I tell you, just like Paul asked for gifts, that fruit might be abound on your account. I'm not going to boast and brag about what I've done. I'm going to boast and brag about Jesus. I'm going to boast and brag about my Lord and what He's able to do. And just like you said, when He reached down His hand, I tell you, I couldn't reach Him, but I thank God He reached down His hand for me. He reached a lot further down for me than he did a lot of other people. And you know what? If he grabbed me from uh, you know, the bottom of the barrel, he can save anybody. If he can use me, he can use anybody. And I thank God for 
his love and mercy and his grace and uh, just transforming my life. And I thank God I'm not what I used to be. I'm not what I'm supposed to be. But you know what? You've not seen the best of me yet. One day you'll find me on the street of gold. I'll be likened to the Son of God. I'll have a glorified body, one that won't have an errant thought, one that won't be sinful. You'll be looking at me and you'll look at uh, Christ and you won't be able to tell the difference. I heard a preacher say that. We'll be made likened to the Son of God. I'm looking forward to that day. But until then, let's be about the Father's business. Even Jesus told his mom, Wish ye not that it must be about my Father's business. What's the Father's business? Seeing souls saved. Promoting the gospel. Spreading the gospel. Preaching the gospel. Church, I'll do my part, but I need help. Pray for me, and I appreciate that, and I love and appreciate you for the opportunity to come, share the burden. If you have any questions, I, uh, I feel free to answer it, ask them, and I'll answer them the best I can. And you might say, well, preacher, what are you doing now since the prison are closed? I'll hit on this and I'll move on. But, uh, there's a prison down in Rome, Georgia, that uh, they contacted one of our missionaries and just said the kids are kind of dis uh, depressed and they're not doing anything and they can't have visitors. They don't get many phone calls. and uh, They're just hurting. Well, can y'all do something? One of the mission missionaries said, we normally don't write letters, but can you uh, allow us to write letters? Can you get that approved? And they went through the chain of command. They got it approved. And, uh, since about April, we've been sending in letters to this facility. And uh, it's me and a couple other missionaries to this youth uh, facility. And since then, we've sent in over 1,000 letters. And each one of those letters is basically a sermon on a one-page paper. And uh, it's going anything away from the call, of, uh, you know, the call to salvation to uh, the dangers of drugs and alcohol and uh, pornography and uh, choosing the right friends and choosing the right spouse. and I mean, it covers all a list of things. It's stuff that we prayed and God put on our heart. We pinned it down and we sent it in. And let me tell you how God moves. We got a call back and uh, they said some of the kids, they get them and they read them. It blesses them and it encourages them that they're asking for more. They said, I want all you can get. If you got extra, give it to me. I want to read it. See, they're soaking it up like a sponge. But then some of the kids, they read it. The Holy Ghost pricks their heart. And they said, I don't want no more of that. You just keep it. Give my letter to someone else. I don't want that. I'm glad that word of God, it's not bound. I'm glad it's still able to go. He said his word will not return void. He'll go and accomplish that to which we'd send it. Since then, a couple of weeks ago, they called and they said, you're going to have to hold off on the letters. In a couple of weeks, we're going to open up the back of the doors and allow families to come back in. And eventually, other people can come in, but we're going to have to hold off. She said, if you could come in and see the facility, she said, there are papers all over the walls. They're all over the windows. They're on the doors. These kids, they've been getting those letters. You know what they've been doing? They've been posting them all over the facility. She said, we got papers everywhere. You know what it is? It's the Word of God being promoted everywhere in that prison. That's not only reaching the prisoners and the juveniles. Well, you know what it's doing? It's reaching all the guards. It's reaching all the other people. It's reaching everybody in that facility. I'm glad God knows exactly what He's doing. He knows exactly what He's doing. You just help us pray that God would water those seeds that's been scattered. And uh, one day in eternity, we'll see the impact of all of our ministries put together. We'll see what God's done in the whole scheme of things. But I appreciate your prayers. I appreciate your help. And uh, church, I love and appreciate you. Again, Pastor, thank you for the opportunity to come. And uh, if you have any questions, I would feel free to answer it. And please come pick up a prayer card and be in prayer for me. As I'd ever be the man of God, God would have me to be. And uh, I know I'm not much. But you know what? I'm glad God can use little things. I don't have a big degree. I don't have great wisdom. But I have a great God. I have a great God that can do anything. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And I thank God if He can use me, He can use anybody in the room tonight. But again, church, I appreciate the opportunity to come. If you have a Bible, turn to Malachi chapter number 3, please. Malachi chapter number 3. I will read one verse of Scripture. I won't be long tonight. Malachi chapter 3. I will read one verse of scripture. If you find your place, we please stand and we'll honor the reading of God's word. I'm not asking you to stand for me. I'm asking you to stand for the uh, Bible that you hold in your hand. I love my Bible. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 3 and verse number 6, the Bible says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. I'll read it one more time. The Bible says in uh, chapter 3, verse number 6, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. With God's help tonight, I don't want to preach a little while on some things that never change. Some things that never change. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, God, we come to you once again. Lord, thank you for our new blessings. Lord, we thank you for letting us come to your house once again. Lord, thank you for the good godly singing that we heard. Lord, thank you for reaching your hand, Lord, way down and picking us up. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for uh, that, Lord, that gospel story. Lord, the good news, Lord, that we can't be bought, like we can't be sold. And God, I pray you to thank you, Lord, for the gospel. Lord, thank you for laying it in your life, Lord, a ransom for many. God, I pray you to just help me, Lord. As the Lord was a stand, Lord, no man stands alone. God, I pray you to anoint me, Lord, with fresh oil. Lord, I pray, Lord, I need that touch. Lord, I need that unction that only comes from you. God, 
God, I pray you anoint my lips of clay. God, I pray, Lord, let me be an encouragement to your people. God, I pray, Lord, use me, Lord, tonight, Lord, to be your mouthpiece. God, I pray, Lord, if there's anything, Lord, there's a hindrance, Lord, in my life, God, I pray you to confess it, Lord, remove it. Lord, empty me myself. Lord, empty me of my sin. Lord, fill me with your spirit, Lord, one more time tonight. God, I pray you, Lord, put a hedge about this place. Lord, I pray, Lord, you walk up and down each and every aisle, visit each and every pew, touch each and every heart, Lord, that's assembled here together. We'll be careful to give you all honor and glory. Lord, there's any that's lost, Lord, save them. Lord, there's any, Lord, that's back soon. God, I pray you chasing the Lord and bring them back into the fold. Lord, we'll be careful to give you all honor and glory. Lord, it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated tonight. As I begin studying uh, this passage of Scripture and what God put upon my heart, here you see in the book of Malachi, we have uh, Malachi speaking here to the people, and uh, he wants to remind them one thing. Here they're going through a dark period in time, and uh, here it is, the end in the Old Testament. We know the next book in the Bible is uh, Matthew, and uh, most of your Bibles, they have one blank page between Malachi chapter 4 and Matthew chapter 1, and did you know that one page in your Bible covers 400 years? But many times in our, uh, when we're reading, we just think we turn one page, and maybe that's one day or one year or one month, but sometimes you flip one page, 400 years transpired, 400 years took place, and that's what we have here in Malachi. Malachi is on the scene, and after that, Matthew comes along and we find John the Baptist coming out of the wilderness eating, uh, eating honey and uh, wild locusts and coming out there saying, you know, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And uh, we can find reading about John the Baptist. But since Malachi and John the Baptist, there are 400 years of quietness. There's 400 years heaven is shut up. Nobody's preaching, nobody's talking. Here Malachi is. He wants to remind the people one thing, and that is, for I'm the Lord, I change not. See, the Lord knew exactly what these people was getting ready to face. He knew exactly they are going to go through these 400 quiet, dark years, I guess you could say. And during that dark period, the Lord wanted the people to, rem to remember, He's not going to change. I tell you, I believe exactly, that's exactly what the Lord wants us to know. Our ch the church today and our nation, what we're going through, He's not going to change. I believe the Bible says in uh, Hebrews 13, verse number 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not going to change. He's a saint. I'm glad that we serve the God that's never going to change. I tell you, I think about things that change in our life. I tell you, politics change. I hate to say it, but preachers change. Some of them compromise. Some of them change their standards. Some of them don't even have any standards. Politics change. Preachers change. If you live, if you live any amount of time, you're going to find out people change. People change in our lives and in your life. I tell you, everything changes. The weather changes, the season changes, sports changes, the stock market changes. Everything around us seems to change. But I thank God for some things that never change. So preacher, what, what's never going to change? Let me give you these four things. We'll go to the house. I thank God for the person of God. I thank God He's never going to change. The person of God, that's who He is. I tell you, He's not going to ever change. He said in Malachi 3, verse number 6, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. He's not going to change, church. He's always been God. He's always going to be God. There's not been a time when God's not been on the throne. He's God, and besides Him, there's none else. I believe He said in John 8, verse number 58, when he was taught, Jesus was talking to the Sadducees and the Pharisees, and they was talking about Abraham. He said, before Abraham was, I am. I tell you, you read in Genesis 1, 1, where it says, in the beginning God created heaven and the earth. You know what? He was there. Then you read over there in Revelation 22 and verse number 21, you know what? You find Jesus, He's there. God's there. And every, on every page, God is there on every single page. He's still God. I tell you, there won't be a moment in my life or yours when God's not God. Yeah. He's not going to be replaced. He's not going to re be removed. He's not going to be impeached. He's going to be God. Yeah. And He'll be God for eternity. Aren't you glad we serve a God like that? He's never going to change. Yeah. I tell you, if He could change, what would He change into? He's always been right. He's always been faithful. He's always been true. He's always been righteous. He's always been faithful. He's always been holy. He's always been God. And I'm thankful He's never going to change. I tell you, I think about Adam and Eve when they sinned in the garden. You know what? He was God then, and He made a way. I think about the, the same one that saw Noah. And Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord there in the early part of Genesis. You know what? God was still God. I think about whenever He raised up Esther for such a time as this. He raised up Joseph to save a nation. He sent Moses down there to be a deliverer. It's the same God we serve today. I think about whenever he provided for Elijah, he protected Daniel. He saved Daniel from the den of lions. It's the same God that we serve today, and he's not going to change. I'm glad that it's the same one that sees me and sees you, and he knows exactly what we're dealing with. He's God, and he's not going to change in our life. Aren't you thankful he's never going to change? 
You say, preacher, what else is never going to change? A person of God. I'm thankful for the position of God. Did you know that? It's never going to change. You say, preacher, where's he at? He's on the throne. He's still on the throne tonight. He's always going to be on the throne. I read over there in the Old Testament whenever Satan, Lucifer, son of the morning, he thought he could get that throne. He said, I'll exalt myself. I'll exalt. I'll become like the Most High. He had his eye on the throne. He said, I'm going to take that place. And God said, no, you're not. Cast him out of heaven. Cast out a third of the angels. He's always going to be on that throne. Can I tell you, it's, ne- it's, it's not going to be Buddha. It's not going to be Muhammad. It's not going to be Confucius. It's not going to be Allah. I'm glad God's always on that throne. He's not going to be replaced. He's on the throne. And He's not going to change. He's always in charge. And He's always going to rule. Aren't you glad that we have a God like that today? He's not going to change. His position's not going to change. He's always going to be in charge. The devil tried to get him off that throne. And he couldn't remove him. There have been several people try to take God out. And you know what? He's still there. And everyone else is in their grave. I read over there in Revelation chapter number 5. John gets the revelation being unfolded. He's seen things which are to come. You know what? Old John, he gets, to, he gets depressed. He starts crying. He said, no man's worthy to open the book. I'll release the seals. He said, ain't no one worthy. In heaven, under heaven, he said, ain't no one worthy to open that book. He started crying. Then one of those elders came by and elbowed John and said, John, don't weep. He said, lift up your head. Look over there. Amen. John looked up. You know what he saw? He saw a lamb that was, yeah. that was slain. Amen. He said, worthy. He's worthy to open the book. Amen. And you know where he was? He was on the throne. Amen. I'm glad that he's on the throne. He was on the throne before. And you know what? In the future, he's going to be on that throne for all eternity. He's coming back. Jesus is coming back to the earth. You know what he's going to do? Sit down upon the throne of David. I'm glad our Lord is on the throne. What a God we serve. His person is not going to change. The position of God is not going to change. Let me tell you this. The power of God, it's not going to change. I'm thankful for the power of God. I read about some great men of God that's went on to their eternal reward. I think about Mays Jackson. Oliver B. Oliver B. Green, Billy Kelly, Harold B. Sattler, D. L. Moody, Percy Ray. I mean, I read some. I mean, read after some of them and listen to some of them preach. And, I mean, they had the power of God on their life. They had the stamp of God and the approval of God on the ministry. I mean, they could just walk into a room. You could just hear them talking. I mean, you could just tell they've been along with God. I mean, I think about Moses whenever he came off that mountain. He hung around God. You know what happened? His face started shining. The people couldn't even handle it. I think about men of God that's hung around God so long that God just started hanging around them. I tell you, I want, to be, I want to be that type of preacher. I want to have that type of ministry. I want God to use my life. I want God to bless my ministry. I want God to bless my church. I want God to bless the things that I do for Him. You see, it's not in myself, but it's in Him. It's not for me to boast and brag about what I've done. There's nothing for me to boast or brag about. It's all about Him. John the Baptist said it best in John chapter 3 and verse number 30. He said, He must increase, but I must decrease. I'm glad I got over myself a long time ago. I saw me, how little I am. I thank God I saw God, how big He is. And I'm glad that He can do exceedingly abundantly above anything I could think or ask. I'm thankful for the power of God. I tell you, that's what we need in our preaching. That's what we need in our singing. That's what we need in our witnessing. We need the touch and the stamp of God, His approval in anything we do for Him. It still takes the power of God. I tell you, we ain't going to accomplish anything else apart from Him. If we try to do it in our arm of flesh, we'll fail. I thank God if we look and lean unto Him, He'll get the job done. I tell you, let me give you one more thing and I'll be done. What else is never going to change? I'm thankful for the position of God, the person of God, the power of God. I'm thankful for the promises of God. Aren't you? God made us some promises. I read over there in Genesis where God made a covenant with Noah. He told Noah, He said, I'm going to make a covenant with you. He preached 120 years. Only his family got in the ark. And the Lord shut them in. God shut the door. And then after all said and done, God put a rainbow in the cloud. He said, whenever I see the boat, he said, I don't remember. I remember my covenant. He said, this is a token. He said, you look up there, and I'll look on it too, and I'll remember what I said, and you remember what I said. And now it never fails. Wherever you're at, whenever God puts that rainbow in the cloud, do you know what somebody says? Hey, look, a rainbow. It never fails. Somebody points out the rainbow. Somebody wants to stop and take a picture. And you know what? I find whenever uh, God was talking to Noah, God tells Noah, look on it and remember. And he said, I'll look on it and I'll remember. Amen. So I believe that God still does that today. So I just can't help but believe that whenever we look at a rainbow, you know what God's doing? He's looking down at the rainbow. So I guess it's saying that we're looking into the eyes of God when we look at a rainbow. Don't you? Whenever God's looking down at the rainbow, we're looking up at the rainbow. We're looking through the same window, that rainbow. And he said, that's a token. I got a message I never preached, but I want to preach on God's tokens. You know what else was a token? That blood. 
the Passover. Rahab the harlot, she had a token. That scarlet thread hanging out the window, God's tokens. That rainbow was a token God gave Noah. I believe Abraham, he had a covenant with God. That blood covenant, he passed by that furnace through there. He said, I'm not making you a promise because how good you are. I'm making a promise on how good I am. I'm keeping my word. And you know what? We're seeing that covenant being fulfilled today. God has his chosen people, and that's the nation of Israel. God has, has, has his hand upon it, and he's going to bless them. But only that, I'm thankful for that new covenant we have with Jesus. Aren't you that better covenant, that better testament? It's found in Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad for that covenant that we have with him? I tell you, I believe over there in John chapter number 14. He said, let not your heart be troubled. He said, you believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house of many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And he said, well, how, how do we know the way? And uh, Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse number 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh the Father but by me. I tell you, he summarized everything right then and there. He said, I'm the way. There ain't no other way. I tell you, Oprah Winfrey, she said, there's a lot of ways and it all kind of pulls together. I don't find that in the Bible. I tell you, there's a lot of ways to go to hell. Just ignore Christ. I tell you, there ain't but one way to go to heaven. And that's still going by Calvary. That's still taking a plunge in that bloody fountain filled with Emmanuel's blood. I'm glad for the promises of God, aren't you? I'm thankful that we have a promise of peace. We have peace with God now. For our Savior. we got peace that passeth all understanding. We can find that in Philippians 4, number 7. Aren't you glad for a person? He said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. He said, I'll go with you all the way, even in the end of the world. You can find that in Hebrews 13, 5. I'm glad we got a provision. He said, I'll supply all your needs at Philippians 4, 19. I'm glad he even grants us a promise of a pardon. That's 1 John chapter number 1 and verse number 9. He said, confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He said he would do it. He's faithful and just. Aren't you glad we got a pardon? If we would just confess. And last one and I'm done. I'm glad the plan of God is never going to change. I tell you, I used to play football in school. And many times whenever we go in at halftime and we'd go in there and we'd be blown out by about 40 points. And we'd have to go back to the drawing board. We had to change some things up. Well, we're going to have to focus on man-to-man -man coverage. We're going to have to stop blitzing and we're going to have to start running the ball. And we'd have to change some things up. We'd have to go back to the drawing board. But you know what? I'm glad God never has to go back to the drawing board. I'm glad he never has to go back to a plan B. You know, God always has a plan. He has a plan A, and it always works out. He's never had to scratch his head and say, well, we're going to have to rethink this thing over. I tell you, I believe I find where Jesus was a lamb foreordained. Before the foundation of the world, he was going to be the sacrifice. God had it all planned out, and it's right on schedule. Everything's unfolding. It's not falling apart. It's falling in place. I'm thankful that we can trust the Lord. Everything's going right on time. I tell you, heaven's not scratching the head. Heaven's not worried. In fact, you know what heaven's doing tonight? They're praising the Savior. Holy, holy, holy. Worthy, worthy, worthy. I tell you, heaven's not worried at all. It's all being fulfilled. And it's right on time. I tell you, I'm thankful for the plan of God. You know what that is? Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. He's a perfect, ultimate sacrifice. There's not going to be another one. I'm glad he was the last Adam. He's the one that died on the tree, paid the way. And I'm thankful that we have a place to go beyond the blue, to be with him. And it's always been blood. You look about Adam and Eve, you know what it took? It took God killing an animal there in that garden, making coats of skin. It took the blood. Whenever Moses got out of Egypt, whenever they went out of there the Passover, you know what it took? It took the blood being applied. I read about all them, David and Solomon, all them making sacrifice. You know what it took? It took blood. And then I read where Jesus Christ walked up Calvary lay down his life, and shed his blood. You read Isaiah 53. He said he was a man of sorrows, despised and rejected. But you know what else I found? He pleased God. Christ satisfied the demands of a holy God with his sacrifice. The Bible says it pleased him to bruise him. I can't understand that. I can't comprehend that, Pastor. How it pleased God to bruise his son. You see, whenever he saw his suffering... He saw his blood. He saw all the things he suffered. He looked and he said, that will be enough to save them. And it pleased him. Can I tell you what great love he has for us? Church, whenever it seems everything's falling apart, it seems like our nation, the left, is against the right. This is not happening. This group is a, a protesting and preaching hate. It seems like everything's changing. They say you need to wear a mask one minute and then you don't need to wear a mask. It's good for you. It's bad for you. 
Everything seems to change. Aren't you glad we can go back to some of the basics on things that's never going to change? Church, let me just give you this. Let's focus on some things that's never going to change in our life. Whenever things seem unsettled, things seem like it's just changing left and right, I'm glad i got some anchors in my life I can go back to. I'm glad i got some blocks and rocks I can go and pray to and say, Lord, you're never going to change in my life. I'm thankful for those things in my life. When was the last time you thanked God for the unchanging things in your life? When was the last time you thanked God for being God? When was the last time you thanked God for His promises? When was the last time you thanked God for His sacrifice through His Son? When was the last time you thanked God for the unchanging things that we can hold on to in a nation that's changing? God, help us to be thankful for the unchanging things in our life. I'll turn it back over to you, Pastor. Aren't you glad we got a God that changes not? Amen. Same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That's God, and the promises of God are real. Uh, you can depend on them, stand on them, and know that what He says, that's what He's going to do. And so we need to trust the Lord. And uh, tonight, we're going to uh, have a time of invitation. If you're here tonight and you need prayer, you need to be saved, uh, you need to pray for somebody. Or you want us to help you pray for somebody, you come. I'll meet you here. Or you can pray in your seat. I think it's important we take time tonight. Maybe somebody's gone astray. Maybe somebody's wandered away uh, tonight. Not where they should be. Well, we have the power to talk to God. Amen. Maybe you know somebody in your family's lost. And then if, if this was it, they wouldn't go to heaven, you see. We have the power to talk to God about that. And He has promised to hear our prayer. He has promised to help us. So as she, as she plays tonight, let's take a moment. And whatever your prayer to God is, you ask Him. Seek His guidance. Seek His help. And the Lord will help us. Let's pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, oh dear God, Father, we thank you, Lord, for what our ears have heard tonight. Lord, we've heard and realized, Lord, that you're God and you change not. But Father, we're, th we're thankful, Lord, that you're an ever-seeing, unchanging God. And Lord, we know that we can depend on what you tell us. We know, Father, we can depend on your faithfulness. Lord, as we are people that are prone to change and people are prone to differences, but God, I'm so glad that you love us the same. And Father, I pray for each prayer request that's been whispered in this room tonight, maybe for a loved one, for a friend, maybe for their self, maybe for somebody lost tonight out in sin, maybe somebody tonight battling the effects of the devil, Satan has got a, as, as our brother mentioned tonight, Satan has got a lot of our young people 
so blinded, Father, they think that evilness is the right way. But God, we ask you, Lord, to stir in their hearts. And we ask you, God, to help this young man, Lord, a shoemate, as he goes to reach these young folks whose life is a mess with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we just pray, Father, you'll stir in the hearts and many more be saved. And Father, tonight, uh, we just pray for those that are ailing and sick. And Lord, we just, what, whatever's being prayed tonight, Father, you know the need. Lord, send revival to us. Help, help us God, to shine a light to a lost and dying world. Forgive us, God, where we have failed you. And Lord, make us strong in these uncertain days. Lord, they're dark days. But God, even in the darkness, your light shines so bright. So, Father, thank you. And, Lord, we thank you for answering our prayer. Thank you for watching over and taking care of us. And, Father, we just praise your name tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. That's a good message, brother. Good message. I'm glad we have a God that doesn't change. Amen. And so we've enjoyed having you with us. And uh, we pray for him. He's driving back home tonight. And so uh, pray for him as he gets on the road as he goes home. I would encourage you to get one of his uh, prayer cards. He has them here with him. Take them and pray for him. And pray for these young uh, uh, men. Do, do, do you all go just, just men, the boys? Or do you all go both? So young men and women they will uh, minister to. And... Uh, you know, he was telling me that a lot of these young men and women, and, and, I, and I'm talking about 10, 11, 12 years old, has never had anybody to love them, uh, anybody to, to help them, say I love you, uh, nothing. Uh, and see, uh, it's sad, isn't it? And that's where it's driven them to. And... Uh, and so they need to know somebody loves them. Amen. First of all, they need to know that God loves them. And uh, that's what changed that. I believe that's what changed that young man's heart. He heard somebody loves him. Not only you, but God too. So amen. You pray for his ministry and get one of his cards and pray for him. Okay. And uh, matter of fact, if you want to go back there and stand back there in the foyer area, and just hand those out to folks that want them. We'll be fine as he as they leave. Okay. All right. You go right ahead, and we're going to be dismissed from here. Don't forget this week Bible study. We're back in the Book of Jeremiah on Wednesday. Both services. Now I will say this to all you Wednesday morning Bible study people. We'll have Wednesday morning Bible study this week. Which is, what is the date? Uh, what, is, what is Wednesday? The 30th? So we'll have Bible study morning and evening. The next two Wednesdays, which will be the first and second Wednesday of October, there'll be no morning Bible study. Because we're in revival the, that, that week. And then the next week, uh, Pastor Mays and myself will be at the Southwide Preachers Fellowship and, uh, in Winston-Salem. We'll be coming back Wednesday morning after the morning service there. We'll be here Wednesday night, uh, but we will uh, we'll not be here on Wednesday morning. So uh, keep that in mind, and uh, uh, so we'll go from there. Of course, there won't be no, you know, we'll have a, a Wednesday night of revival. Of course, we'll have a revival meeting uh, at 7 o'clock. So keep that in mind. Pray for the revival. starts next Sunday with Brother Brian McBride. Many of us heard Brother McBride before. He's been with us in revival meetings. He's been in camp meeting. So uh, you, you plan to attend. You'll be, you'll be blessed. And also the camp meeting rally. Uh, so we're going to have that this coming Saturday, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We'll start. And then after it's all over, we're going to have some food over in the fellowship hall and the gym. We'll just scatter everybody out everywhere. And uh, so, uh, so anyway, you plan to come. If you can't or if you don't feel safe coming, I understand that. We will be live streaming that meeting. It will be live streamed on the Mountaineer Baptist camp meeting. 
It, will, it won't be on the church face. Will it be on the church too? It'll be on both of them. So you can get it on both of them? Okay, so it'll be on both of them. It, it'll, it'll be on the camp meeting page, on the church page, I guess on YouTube as well, and probably on our website. So if you can't come and you would rather watch it that way, you could feel free to do that as well. Amen. So either way, I hope you catch it. And it should be a good day here. For we missed camp. Boy, I missed camp meeting. I don't know about you all, but I missed it. I always enjoyed camp meeting. It's just a great time of the year, but just the circumstances as they were, things that had happened in other places just wasn't a good idea. And some says, well, it ain't a good idea now. Uh, well, uh, maybe not. I don't know. I've been to find out a lot of stuff ain't a good idea. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but anyway. Uh, God's been taking care of us. Amen. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's really tough. It's really tough. Really tough to know what to do. Amen. It really is. So I just say be careful. And, uh, and uh, take, take, and if, if you're, if you're, I've, I've said this from the get go. If you're, if you've got health problems, underlying health problems, the things, you know, then you, you should be careful. You need to be mindful. Amen. Uh, and take care of yourself. God give us enough sense to do that. Amen. You act like we ain't got any sense. Amen. But, but uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I act like I ain't got no sense. But, but nonetheless, we ought to take care of ourselves. Amen. I better hush while I'm ahead. Well, <coughs> amen. But amen. Ain't that right? Well, it's good to see you. I'm glad to, I'm glad to see Priscilla. Hello, Priscilla. Good to see you. Amen. Let's see. Anything? Am I missing anything? Well, let's stand and be dismissed. Our Father, which art in heaven, thank you, God, for allowing us tonight to be back in the house of God. Thank you, Lord, for this message that we've heard tonight. And, Lord, I'm glad you're still God and you change not. And, Lord, I'm thankful, Lord, that even in this time of uncertainty you're still the same and you you watch over us take care of us we thank you for that thank you lord for your sweet spirit that abides with us when we gather here not only here but when we leave here your sweet spirit abides with us still lord bring us back here at the next point of time bless this week it's gonna be a busy week lord give us safety bless our camp meeting rally lord we're just expecting a good time of worship and lord as we start revival next week father we just want all things to stay clear that we can be fed the word of God, how we need fed, how we need preaching of God's word. So, Lord, help us, and thank you again for this day, and give us safety now as we go home. And Lord, you bring us back the next point in time. In Christ's name we ask and pray. Amen and amen.